Hello, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Today, we're going to cover how to adjust the declination on a Sunto compass. I highly recommend getting a compass with adjustable declination. For a long time, compasses didn't have this feature, but now many do. The Sunto M3 has this feature and a lot of others make it a great choice for backcountry navigation. We cover this in detail on Lesson 1. Why is adjustable declination important? When your compass is properly adjusted for declination, the needle points to magnetic north, but all of your bearings are to true north, eliminating any need for confusing backcountry arithmetic. The math for adding or subtracting your declination, which is recommended in a lot of other instructional videos and books, may seem pretty simple, but remembering that math years from now when you're stressed and lost is going to be really difficult. If you travel to a new area of the country where the declination is different, adjusting for that new spot takes about 15 seconds. Let's go ahead now and look at the Sunto M3 and see how to adjust the declination. Here we have two different Sunto M3 compasses. The older compass on the left is adjusted for declination. The newer one on the right is not. Right out of the box, your compass will look like this. Notice if the dial is rotated to north, the orienteering arrow, or the shed, is exactly lined up with this small triangular reed bearing here mark. So this compass is not adjusted for declination. Now let's look at the yellow compass, which is adjusted for a local declination in Oregon of 16 degrees east. Notice with the compass dial also set to zero, the shed, or orienteering arrow, is now pointed off from true north to about 16 degrees or to the east. This is set for the correct local declination. Now, when you line up the red end of the orienteering arrow, or as we cover in lesson two, red in the shed, we're compensating for the 16 degrees east declination, and our actual bearing here is to true north. So in a nutshell, adjusting your declination simply means changing the direction to which your orienteering arrow points. Say I wanted to adjust this newer compass to the local declination in Oregon of 16 degrees east. If I turn the compass over, you can see a tiny screw here on the underside of the base plate. Turning this screw moves the orienteering arrow, and this adjusts the declination. This compass comes with a tiny screwdriver here that's on the lanyard, and we use this to turn the screw. If you don't have the screwdriver, the tip of a small knife blade works as well. It can be helpful to have your compass on a sheet of white paper for this next step. Looking at the back of the compass, we can see east declination here, west declination here, a series of small red lines around the lower ring of the dial showing the declination value, and then at the base of the orienteering arrow, we've got this small black line extending down. What we're going to do is move this thin black line onto the proper declination adjustment by turning the screw. To adjust your compass to east declination, you want to turn the screw adjusting screw clockwise and only just a little. On this compass, turning the screw about a half turn moves the declination a whole 10 degrees. Let's try that. Keep your eye here on the bottom of the orienteering arrow as I turn the screw clockwise. Notice the arrows moving off to the right. That's just about 16 degrees, and we can stop and leave it there. Now, when we turn our compass over and put red in the shed, the needles point into magnetic north, but our bearing here is to zero or true north. Our compass is properly adjusted for declination, and we're ready to go. Well, that's it on adjusting your Sunto compass for declination. Remember, if you adjust this one time for your local area, you shouldn't have to touch it for years to come. Measuring bearings to true north like this is the modern and much simpler way to use a compass.